Is there anything more desperate than begging God to give you the courage to kill yourself? This is an incredibly, incredibly difficult video for me to make. Podcast. And it's hit me hard. And I, I wrote a script for it, which I don't usually do. And I'm just going to refer to those notes as we go through there. Is there anything more desperate than going to get your gun, putting it in your mouth, tasting the metal, tasting the oil, and pulling the trigger? Ending everything that you know. What brings us to that point? What brings us to that level, to that degree of desperation and of pain, of hopelessness? I wanted to talk about this because in discussions I've had with people over the last couple of days, there seem to be many of us fighting this battle. And there are lessons to be learned for all of us. I wrote a script, I've made notes because I understand how important this is and I don't want to leave it out, out anything. So for me, there are a couple of things that get me through, that keep pushing me through, that keep helping me drive on each day. And that's the understanding, if I go and get my gun, if I put it in my mouth, and if I pull the trigger, they won. The abusers won. They took everything from me. And that makes me freaking angry. I'm not able to access my anger about the abuse. I'm, it's still numb and it's very challenging to work through. But I get angry with the fact that that still follows me through today. So what brings us to this point? What brings us to that point of, of getting the gun, of putting it in your mouth? Or standing on, going up to the top of the building, standing on the ledge? Another challenge for me was when I was in Cape Town was Table Mountain. And I heard about a suicide off Table Mountain, and that thought stuck in my head. And in my mind, I'd even picked the ledge, because these are still battles I fight within myself. Maybe it's something that'll go away, maybe it's not. But I can understand that it's only a feeling, and my thoughts and my feelings have no consequences. It's my words and my actions. My going to get my gun. My climbing to the top of the building. My taking the cable car up Table Mountain and walking to the ledge. Those consequences are dire. Because they'll end me. They will end everything that I have stood for, that I've experienced, everything that I've dreamed of and I've hoped for that I've wanted to do with my life, meals with friends, with family, conversations, funny YouTube videos, gone over. Suicide is a very, very final solution to a very, very temporary problem. And I understand that because I've been sober since 2006. And I haven't had my gun in my mouth probably since 2005. Oh, this is hard, guys. The way that I'm able to talk to you is I have to access what I'm feeling. 
and what these feelings were and and are within me and it's tough but I wanted to talk about this today because understanding when you are at that point of desperation when there is nothing left let me read this no one wants to kill themselves when they have other options when they have alternatives prospects no one puts a gun in their mouth when there are th- when things are looking up when things are getting better when things are getting easier no one pulls the trigger when the end is in sight we can go through tremendous pain and anguish and difficulty and struggle and this is the point of today's talk podcast video sharing no one pulls the trigger when the end is in sight we can run a race and we can be dying but we know we're 30 k's into a 90 k race we got 60 k's left of pushing through you know got to train a really tough gym session and it's an hour and i've got 65 more reps to do writing a terrifying exam or going to the principal's office to get jacks you know you got to be there you got to sit the principal will be back at 11 30 if you don't know when he's going to be back it's terrifying and that's what we're sitting with at the moment we have no idea when the end is in sight we don't know how long this is going to go on, how much worse it's going to get. We keep getting moments of normality, moments of hope, moments of, uh, yay, you know, I wrote this here, that when we have certainty, hope, belief that things will be okay, that they'll be normal like they were, even if it's in a week's time, a month's time, a year's time, heck, five years imagine if we were told five years from now things will be back to normal we can all go yo that's going to be tough okay fine i can plan that's one of the gifts i gave myself was when this started the first time i said right 18 months shutting the gym it's going to be 18 months to three years We're sitting with no end in sight, no understanding of what's coming next, what variant, what this, what that. So when we have no end in sight, we don't know how long this is going to go. We can lose hope. We can lose drive. We can lose desire. And that's what happens. That's what happens when we think about killing ourselves. We feel that there's no hope. There's no end in sight. There's no way out. And it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And you're going to get hit again and again. And your armor is going to get dented and broken and shattered. So you make a choice. You pull the trigger or you don't. I'm here today, 14 years later, because I didn't pull the trigger. And I'm incredibly grateful that I didn't because I get to do things I could never imagine like this. Talking to you. Sharing with you. So how do we not pull the trigger? There are a few things I'd like to share. Firstly, for me, I just broke it down to every one day at a time. I can deal with the day from the time I wake up in the morning to the time I put my head on a pillow at night. That's all I can do. I can plan for tomorrow. I can learn from yesterday. But that's all I can do. 
It's my dad calling. <laughs> I'll phone him just now. We can be kinder to ourselves. We can forgive ourselves for not being able to function at the same level we were able to function at. We can forgive ourselves for looking forward to the weekends when we never looked forward to them before. We can forgive ourselves for not being able to operate and deal with our families the way that we used to before. We can find little moments to do things for ourselves. To forgive ourselves. Thirdly, and I'm going to put together a post on this as well. We can start to look after ourselves physically. That means getting out in the sun. Walking. Making sure we're getting enough hydration. Making sure that we're eating as well as we can making sure we're taking a little bit of time, however small, for ourselves. And we can make sure that we're getting as good a quality sleep as we possibly can. And maybe that means limiting social media and content and screens. We can understand, number four, that we have survived so much already. It's proof of what we're capable of surviving. A wonderful way of doing that is writing a journal. Writing down what you feel like at the end of the day. What you've been through. What you've survived. How you've gotten it done. And you can go back and reference that. And make notes and... You know, draw line. it's a lot of fun. Because a journal is just honesty because sometimes things look worse or better when we look behind and when we remember. As I said, we can learn from our past. We can do nothing about it, but we can learn from it. We can plan for tomorrow, but we can only act on today. And last but not least, and I got mocked and teased in a friendly and kind and loving way for doing this in early recovery. But I started every morning by looking in the mirror and telling myself three things that I was proud of myself for. Three things. Or three things that I liked about myself. I looked myself in the eye and I said, Nick. I like the fact that you feel others' pain. Nick, I like the fact that you have prioritized honesty in your life. Nick, I like the fact that you love cheesecake. And at the end of the day, you go and look in that mirror before you get in bed and you tell yourself three things you're proud of. It can be as simple as, I got through the day. I swallowed hard and I didn't shout at my kids. I swallowed hard, I focused, I breathed, and I didn't drink. Every day. Because we need to be reminded that we're capable of getting through. And it's a powerful thing when we talk to ourselves. When we share these things with ourselves. And you know, I love it because it forces you to look for the good in yourself. And it forces you to do things in the day to be proud of. We've made it this far. All we have to do, all we have to do is get through today. Plan for tomorrow. But get through today. That's all we have to do. We don't have to pull the trigger. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Is there going to be a tomorrow? Am I going to be here in a month's time? A week's time? Don't know. But I know here today, right now. And I'm above ground. And every day I am above ground is a good day. Because I didn't pull the trigger. 
I get to hang out with you guys. I get to share what my pain taught me. What my suffering taught me. With you. And we get through this together. Just today. That's all we got to deal with. When tomorrow comes, just today. I love you guys. Us. I hope this helped, guys. I really do. This was tough. But I didn't have a choice in what happened to me as a child. I didn't have a choice in the tools I chose to deal with it. But I have a choice in what I do with it in sobriety and as an adult. And I choose to do this with you, for you, for all of us. Again, I love you guys. Oh,